So API Monitor is here, PMA 403. And I'm going to shove these instructions over to the side so I can show you my uh, desktop. Uh, thank you. I see Caitlin mirroring things. for That's good for people who aren't having success with Twitch. So API Monitor is here. And <coughs> that's good. This is an old tool, but very nice if you want to learn about the Windows Application Program Interface, which is the API. So it offers here to monitor a process. So I click that, and I want to monitor Notepad. So I just go to C Windows System 32 and find Notepad and open that. And then um, before I go any further, I want to tell it what to monitor. So I'm going to shove this to the side for now, if it'll move. That'll do. All right. Here's all the Windows API calls. And there's a few calls I want to monitor here. And I can find them. For example, uh, the simplest thing to do is use the search function, which is this thing. I think I'm going to have to cancel this thing here to get it back to. All right. So let's go here and search. All right. So I'm searching for create file because I'm going to see some of the API calls that create a notepad file. <clears throat> there are going to be a lot of API calls that here contain this string, so I will have to hunt for them for a while. Uh, find next, I say. Okay, good. Uh, let's go back up. I think I missed one because I had a little lag. Okay, so MF begin create file, but the ones I want are kernel32 and ntdil. Uh, and you can see what this is in MP flat or something, MF flat. That's not the right things. So I have to keep hunting till I find the right ones. You're lying. Um, oh, because I lifted it up. Okay, we got to go down. All right. So that's not it. And MF cancel create file. That's not it. And none of this MF stuff is right. Okay, create file moniker is not it. Uh, create file 2. I'm looking for create file A and create file W. Okay, that might be it, but it should be a child of kernel 32, and it is. Okay, good. So it was the fifth or sixth one down. Create file A and create file W here. Those are ones I want to monitor. And there's another one called NT create file in NT dill. So I'll keep searching through these. All right, LZ. TX is not it. Here's NT Dill, NT create file. There it is. So it's a it's a big list of uh, a big tree with a lot of entries and a little confusing to hunt through, rather like the Windows registry. But anyway, now I've checked those. And once I've done them, then I want to launch Notepad and just give it a um, an argument. So I'm going to launch Notepad here with Notepad. <clears throat> and then give it a name here, like I think my new file is what I used in the project. My new file dot text, and then OK. And that launches Notepad, and it asks me, "Do you want to create a file?" And I'll say yes. And what happened here is this API monitor caught some of those API calls, so you can examine them and see how it works. So if you click one of these, this was a call to NT create file. And down here, it shows you the uh, hexadecimal data that was sent. And here it shows you information about uh, the call parameters before the call and after the call. So you can find out exactly how it works. And uh, one of these, the call to create file W, which is here. See, this one has the file name as a parameter. You can see it up here. And you can see it here, my new file.txt. You can also notice this pattern that we talked about before, and you'll see again, which is a null byte after every ASCII character. That's Microsoft 16 bit Unicode, an old way to make programs international, which Microsoft still uses. And in here, you see that parameter, post call value and pre call value. All right. 
So that's um, Notepad. Now, what's more fun is to steal a password with API Monitor. So I'm going to um, in, right click this and terminate the process. And then right click and remove this. All right. And now I'm going to clear these old calls. So I can do that to clear the whole category. And uh, if I go up, I can collapse everything to make it a short list. There. And then I can click that to clear it. So now I've cleared all my old API calls. And I'm ready to monitor some different things. And to steal a password from RDP, uh, there's different stuff to launch, but first I'm going to launch uh, RDP. This is Microsoft's remote control client. Everybody uses it all the time. Remote desktop connection. And you can go to a computer, and I've got one called wind, W-I-N-D dot Sam's class dot info. And I can put um, a username here, like test user. Okay, and it's ready to connect, but before I connect, I want to prepare this to monitor it. So I'm going to um, yeah in the running processes pane. Ah, down here, running processes. Okay. Find uh, MSTSC, which is Terminal Service Client, which is Microsoft's name for their remote desktop connection. There it is, MSTSC. Right click, monitor. Start monitoring. All right. <clears throat> okay, now it's going to pick up the calls there. Now we just have to find the right uh, API calls, and they are um, crypt protect memory and crypt unprotect memory. So I'm going to search again for crypt. I think I'll crypt protect. I'll do this one. Crypt protect memory. And I might find the right one right away. This is in data encryption. Crypt, yep, that did it. Crypt 32. There it is. Crypt protect data. And crypt unprotect. And wait a minute. It's crypt protect memory and crypt unprotect memory. Those are the two I want to monitor. So I'm ready. Now I can try logging in here. So I'm test user. I'm just going to connect. And when it asks me for a password, I'm going to give it test pass. Those are the wrong username and password. So I'm not going to get in the server. But that's not what I wanted to do. I just wanted to steal the credentials here. So I'll close this. And here I've got some uh, API calls. And some of these have the test the password in it. Like right here, you see the data. That's just non-password type data there. Uh, this one here, there's test user. And it's the next one that's got the password, I think. Yeah, someplace around here it'll have test pass. There it is, test pass. So this is how you can steal the password. Of course, again, this is just learning how the API works. It's not a real attack that gains you anything because I was administrator on the box anyway. But um, this shows you how the Windows API works and gets you used to these terms and such, which is important if you want to understand Microsoft Windows software and malware. So that's a good thing to learn.